Hello, I'm Gaina Payton. I'm the Director of Geosciences with Geoteric. Today I'm going to be talking about cognition and seismic interpretation. During the course of the talk today, I'm going to be looking at answering the following questions. So what is cognition? How does it influence seismic interpretation? And how can we work more effectively by understanding cognition and the cognitive processes? So what is cognition? Well, cognition is the mental action or process of acquiring knowledge and understanding through thought, experience and the senses. It's how we understand the world around us, how we make sense of everything that we see, we hear and that we touch. Cognition is the way in which we transfer data into understanding. And this happens in many separate steps. So first of all, we have data at the bottom level. And data is simply a representation of something. Its the real value is in the information that it contains, that it represents. So information tells us about some facet of a system and it helps us make sense of the data that we've got in front of us. When we have information, once we internalize it and once we store it in our brains, in our memory, then it becomes knowledge. So knowledge is simply information that we have stored in our memory. But really, understanding is at a higher level still, because understanding is the ability to have insight, the ability to grasp the full meaning of knowledge and the ability to infer other things from that knowledge. So it's possible to have knowledge without having understanding. And cognition is a way that we transfer from data into understanding. And here's a practical example. So we have here some data. We have five letters of the English alphabet. Now that's just data, but actually it contains information because apple, the word apple, those five letters in that order represents a particular object, a particular item, a piece of fruit. Now the fact that I know that the word apple represents this piece of fruit is knowledge. The fact that I looked, I knew this without looking it up, it was something that I remember, means that it's knowledge. And the understanding is my awareness that that piece of fruit is edible, that it has a taste and I know what that taste is, I know what the texture is. And I know what I can do with an apple. I know what I can combine it with to make a really nice meal. So data, information, knowledge and understanding is a gradual build up of an awareness that takes you from just pure data, pure representation of something into a full awareness of a, an item, an object or a feature. And understanding influences all our decisions and all our actions because those are all based on our understanding of something. So cognition directly impacts our decisions and our actions because those are based on our understanding. The greater our understanding and the more improved our understanding, the better the decisions and the actions that we take from it. So how does cognition work? How do we actually transfer that data into understanding? What are the steps? Well, over 40% of the brain is involved in visual cognition. And there are really strong links between the visual cortex at the back of the brain and the limbic system, which is involved in memory and emotion and mood. So the ability of our brains to access knowledge that is stored in all these different parts of the brain is a fundamental part of being able to understand what we see and understand the images and the data that we get through our senses. And that's all a fundamental part of getting a better understanding. So the process by which we transfer data into information is through pattern recognition, through context and through association. So if we take a look at this image here, what we see is data. We see data that's represented by color. Now, we can understand, start to understand this or get the information out of it by identifying shapes, by identifying the different connections between the different lineations. So we can now turn this data 
into information by associating it with shapes that we already know. So we've got flat laminar areas, we've got synformal areas, antiformal areas and prograding features. So we're starting to associate it using pattern recognition. And we can do that with any kind of image. So here we've got an image where we can see river systems, we can see channels, and we recognize the geology in this image because we're associating it with something that we already know, something that we've seen before, just throughout our lives, seeing river systems, we understand how they work and what they look like. So we're associating a new image we've never seen before with something that it looks similar to, to help us um, recognize it and get the information from that image. But knowing which information to access is part of understanding the context of something, part of understanding the context of the image that we're seeing. So if we go back to this image that we have here, where we've already transferred the data into information using pattern recognition, we can take that one step further um, and put it into context so that we can apply more association. So the context here is that this image is a vertical section through some seismic data, and those lines represent the reflection boundaries in the data. So now that we know that, we can start to associate the shapes with geological features. So the flat laminar areas are where we've got quiet deposition. We've got the antiformal areas, which are the levees, the synformal areas where we've got channel cuts. And we've got the prograding features where we've got drop in sea level. So by associating this further, using the context that we now know it sits in, we can get a better understanding of what's going on. We get more information from the data. Context is very important because it tells us which bits of knowledge to use to understand an image. So within the context of a geosciences presentation, we can look at this image and say, OK, what do we see? Well, we see some sinusoidal features coming down the middle, which could be a channel system. We see a more diffuse area at the top, which is possibly a levee system. And so we're interpreting it. We're building up information from this image based on the context of a geosciences um, presentation. But if I expand that image, you'll see that that context was completely wrong. What we're actually seeing is an image of part of somebody's brain, the arteries and veins that are in the cerebral cortex. So now that we know this, we know that we're not looking at channels and levees. We know that we're looking at veins and arteries coming through. So knowing the context, knowing the bigger picture, tells us which knowledge to access for the association to help us understand what the information is in the data that we're looking at. So once we have information, we've used pattern recognition, context association to get the information. When we then store that in memory, that becomes knowledge. It becomes something that we know. So memory is simply information that has been retained. So facts, emotions, thoughts, this is all knowledge. And this is used for future association because it helps us then convert more data into information. So knowledge is stored in our neural networks, in the connections between the synapses in the brain. And these are all reinforced with use. So the more we access those memories, the stronger those connections are, so the more we'll remember things. No, so knowledge actually then gives us a feedback loop. It allows us to then use that knowledge. The more knowledge we have, the more we can transfer data into information. The more patterns we recognize, the more images that we've seen, so the more features we can associate new images with helps us build our knowledge further. So it's a continuous feedback loop. The more we know, the more we can transfer data into information and into more knowledge. But to transfer that knowledge into understanding takes another step. And for this, we need to analyze the relationship between different pieces of information. We need to be able to pull different bits together to really get a full understanding of something. So to understand the relationship between different pieces of information, 
we can use three main comparison methods. And these are methods that the brain intrinsically understands, that are intuitive to our brain. And the brain is particularly effective at understanding the relationships between the information. These three methods are juxtaposition, superposition, and explicit encoding. So with juxtaposition, this is where we see data side by side, and we can look at the differences between them. We can also put the images one on top of the other and move between them in time as well. When we do this kind of juxtaposition, we're using the visual system and memory to identify the changes. And we can look between an image to see how one is different from another and therefore the relationship between them. But to be effective, the images must all be within the space of an eye span. Because if you have to look away and come back again, then that uses higher cognitive functions of recall, which is much more cognitively harder to achieve. So using juxtaposition within the space of an eye span allows you to see the differences very quickly and easily. There's also superposition, which is basically opacity blending. So it's where you blend one image on top of another. And this allows you to see both images simultaneously, both pieces of information at the same time. And you can see the relationship between the two. The third technique is explicit encoding. This is where we use color, so particularly color blending, to show us three pieces of information together. So we often use this in seismic analysis to put three different volumes into an RGB blend or a CMY blend using color for each different volume. The relationship is then displayed by the different colors that you see in the output volume. So a change in color in the image represents the relationship between two or three of those input volumes. It's much easier for our brain and our eye to identify different changes in color and even subtle changes in color than it is to identify differences between volumes by looking at them individually. So it's a particularly effective way of showing us the information that in the relationship between different pieces of information in a way that's easy for us to understand. So here's an example of how combining information gives us a better understanding. So we have here two attributes from seismic data. On the left-hand side, we have an envelope volume, so showing us the amplitude of the data. And we can see a nice bright amplitude response, which shows us the reservoir. So this is showing us where we've got good quality sands. We've also got a structural attribute, a dip attribute, this shows us where we've got faults, where we've got discontinuities. If we just look at the structural attribute, we have no indication of where the reservoir is, where the good quality sands are. If we just look at the stratigraphic attribute, we have no indication of where the cross-cutting faults are, where there might be baffles or boundaries. So by comparing the two together, by visualizing them together, bringing those two pieces of information together in the same space, we're able to see both structure and stratigraphy simultaneously and analyze the relationship between them. So now we can see how the high amplitude zones sit adjacent to the faults, how we've got cross-cutting faults that intersect through zones of high and low amplitude. So this gives us a better understanding of what's going on in the reservoir because we combine both structure and stratigraphy together. So looking at multiple data in combination helps us understand the data and the relationships and the whole system much more effectively. So how can we work more effectively using what we know about cognition? Well, the principal purposes of a cognitive interpretation is to really understand what you're looking at before you spend the time interpreting it. And this will save you a lot of time if you can understand what you're seeing before you interpret. So this means bringing in data to analyze relationships from lots of different sources, integrating it together. But this can very quickly lead to cognitive overload. There's a lot of data out there, a lot of different types of data, a lot of different information that we can bring together. So analyzing this together, pulling it all together can be overwhelming. 
So doing this in an easy way, doing this in a way that doesn't lead to cognitive overload is important to be able to use cognition effectively. So how can we work more effectively using cognition and using an awareness of cognition? Well, effective techniques are relatively straightforward. So things like using interactive techniques, being able to combine algorithms with interpreter control so you can change something and you immediately see the effect that has. That gives you immediate feedback so you know exactly what you've done and the impact that it has. You can then determine whether it's right or wrong and then use that knowledge and that understanding to decide whether you should continue down that route or not. So interactive techniques are very important. Secondly, using easy comparison of different data results. So being able to compare things together easily. And we can do this in a number of ways, whether it's through multi-volume panel display, so being able to see multiple different versions of the same thing simultaneously to compare them, or whether we're combining information together to look at the relationships between things, so particularly using color blends or using volume combinations. Also, if we interpret on multiple data sources simultaneously, this gives us a better understanding because we can integrate those different pieces of information simultaneously into our interpretation. So not just interpreting on 2D slices, stepping through the same volume every time, but working in a 3D environment on multiple volumes simultaneously. And finally, using these feedback loops, this cybernetic approach, to be able to adapt when you learn and when you get new knowledge. So taking everything that you learn, feeding it back in through the association to make more sense of the data that you have. So constantly feeding back what you've learned to help you understand the data further, get greater insight and to get an improved understanding of it. So to conclude, cognition is the mental process of acquiring knowledge and understanding through thought, experience and the senses. It's how we make sense of the world around us and everything that we see. It influences seismic interpretation because we use it at every stage of understanding. So in the association, in context, by analyzing relationships, it all helps us interpret the data that we're seeing. And to work more effectively when we're doing a seismic interpretation, if we use techniques that help use our cognitive abilities to their maximum, things like interactive techniques, combining information, integrating it together using color blending, opacity blending, and also using the feedback approach. So constantly using what you learn to then influence how you get information out of further data, allowing your knowledge, your understanding to evolve with each iteration through the data that you have. So all of this then means that you can spend more time understanding the geology and less time analyzing the data. So thank you very much indeed for listening to this e-lecture. There are more e-lectures available online at the Learning Geosciences website. Please feel free to share or like this lecture as well. Thank you very much.